Welcome to the Mind Body Content Podcast. We are your hosts, Nick Pinelli, Raymond Olivares, and I am Chris Lawler. And mm-hmm. our mission every week is to educate you about the three things all entrepreneurs must pay attention to mind, body, and content. Please don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe on wherever you consume your content. On today's show, we will be discussing Stephen Covey's Covey's. It's Covey, right? Covey, there it is. Quadrants, the secret to productivity. Raymond, Nick, how is everybody doing today? Dude, fantastic. Living the dream. That's what I want to hear. Nick, how about you, man? Definitely the same, man. Every time I listen to that intro, it just gets me so hyped. I get so yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, it's ten seconds. Guys... I'm like, let's go. Yeah, exactly. And then it's the ten seconds, and then it's all the name intros, and you're like, ah, ah. Yeah. We'll feel that electricity, and yeah, let's exactly. go. Don't have a heart attack on us, Nick. We need That's you. Right. We need okay, you. Okay, sorry. About the whole well, Everybody is doing good today. Well, we are going to be talking about Stephen Covey. I am not as familiar with this gentleman, but you guys have been reading his book. What was the book that you guys were talking about? It's the Seven Habits of the Highly Something Effective yes. People. I should know this one. This is a pretty famous book, but I have never read it. Uh, but before we dive in to talk about that, let's go ahead and just take a look at today's quote. It is going to be coming from Stephen himself. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. Um, Nick, you're the expert on Steven here. Break that down for me. What is he (laughs) really talking about? Man, I just got thrown totally under the bus. Well, um, (laughs) here's the thing. I am currently for the first time ever reading this book. Um, And when I think about my journey through self-improvement and things like that, I think the one thing that I had heard years and years before even this was even a concept was this book. Um, the seven habits of highly effective people. So to, in my mind, it just becomes one of the most famous things. I'd never really gotten into it until just recently. And it's been mind blowing. So I can see why so many millions of lives have been changed by it. Um, but this quote in particular is talking a lot about the principle that we're going to dive into today, which is his four quadrants of productivity. Um, and really what it does is it establishes that there are certain things that we think are priorities that we think are going to be very important for us. And then there are the things that we should be doing sort of every single week to really help us stay out of a crisis mode and really be able to prepare and grow week to week to week. And that's one of his uh, big principles, as we'll dive into in just a second, is basically the idea of how do we move out of doing the things that seem important, that grab our attention quickly, right? Whether that be the phone call, text, whatever it might be. And how do we move into laying the foundation week to week of doing the activities that will actually move the needle, get us to where we need to go? Um, So that's kind of the basic principle. And I love that quote, because it is all about being productive in uh the all the right ways um so yeah that's kind of where the general principle is for today's episode and why it's so important i read this just recently and i was like oh my gosh why haven't i thought of this before um so it's definitely something that is impactful and very helpful to me and i'm hoping that it helps a lot of other people too right on well uh, raymond so do you resonate with this are there a bunch of things that you do throughout your day that are not as much of a priority as they probably should be? Or do you fall into oh, this trap? <laughs> are you, this is a leading question. <laughs> You're like, do you fall into this trap? Do you, do you, do you, do I know your whole life? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got something you want to tell us, I, Raymond? I, I, yeah. No? No, I'm fine. I'm okay. I don't, I don't scroll on social media. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is something super powerful with the with what Stephen uh, Covey has and it's not the easiest and even in the book I believe he talks about how it is a challenge to get to this way of thinking because there is always something that comes up despite the you know there's the social media distractions there's the important distractions that need to get done now. And there's the things you think are important or you just really want to do where you distract yourself, but they're not very important. And then like we had talked more about it, but all the super important stuff that is your long-term goals that benefit long-term. And I think that's like a struggle with a lot of people in the world that I've, that I've personally have talked to. There's always something it's like, man, I know I should be doing this. It'll benefit me long-term, but I'm having trouble doing X, Y, and Z to get that or 
having the patience to do that, the persistence, the practice, the consistency. So, I mean, I've read this book twice and not gonna lie when the first time I read it, I was not in the right mind space to read this because it is, it's got so much good nuggets in here. Uh, it, it can't be a one-time read. There's too much. There's too much in here. Um, but it's all great stuff. So, yeah, I, I try to uh, implement this on my daily life. And um, it, it helps me think about it. Well, we should introduce the, I, I want to say like what it is, but I want. Nick That's okay. We're going to get, we're going to get to the exercise here. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, but basically what you guys are talking about is like being active towards stuff instead of just reactive and, and whatnot. Is that kind of the general gist of what we're discussing here? I know I've worked for a couple of bosses that were very reactive throughout yeah. the day and never <laughs> took action. So I think, I think that's, that's definitely a principle that he goes into. Um, that is a smart, sort of way of looking at it but i the smart way i inter- way. smart sort of sort, sort of, of smart. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> sort of smart, smart. Sort of, it's a kind little of smart. smart not exactly. very smart just yeah. enough <laughs> look i i gotta give you the exact right amount of praise not okay. no, not too much not too little you don't want to go sort to of chris's head 11 yeah. he's already got, he's right already there. got the voice of the gods so <laughs> that's right i know but unfortunately we keep showing them my face too so uh, it, like, it <laughs> it's gotta balance that. out you gotta yeah. give us a chance here chris <laughs> right I mean, you, have, you have enough beard for both of us like, that's what they, in, that's the balance uh, i don't know one of these days it, it'll come come in for you one I'll, of these days. I'll be a real boy one day <laughs> I believe in that. I, well, right I, on well well uh, that's enough about the quote then it sounds like you guys are tiptoeing around today's exercise and i don't understand today's exercise so nick raymond it's up to you guys to explain this keep it in layman's terms as we just discussed i'm not that bright <laughs> I'm right 11 percent smart <laughs> oh, right no we're we're very <laughs> clear clear right, on that that's, clear. that's that's been established good, good. Um, so yeah take it away What's yeah the- yeah <laughs> What of is course. this quadrant thing that we have been talking about? Because I um, am lost. Yeah, no worries. Uh, do we have that uh, graphic? Absolutely do. Awesome. So basically the way that Stephen Covey has broken things down is he's got urgent, non-urgent, and then important and non-important in two different sections here. And what we do is we start to analyze how these things play out in our lives and how uh the different activities that we might see end up in each quadrant and then we establish what does living from that sort of quadrant really get us right so something that would be both urgent and important might be a deadline that you would have um Mm. if you if for a lot of us content creators it might be uh the edit is due by the end of the week so all of a sudden that's what we have to do that becomes the thing everything else gets moved around because boom we're in that quadrant one of living I'm going to skip quadrant two for now because that is our Mac daddy where we want to stay Uh, and just kind of, yeah, that's right. Um, That's my language that I'm using today. So it's okay. It's okay. Just stick with it. All right, cool. That Um, language slaps. (laughs) Oh boy. (laughs) Oh, we're having technical Uh, difficulties. (laughs) He's trying to be hip. (laughs) Uh, don't worry. Let, let's just groove along, guys. Anyway, just, okay. <laughs> yes, please. If you can retroactively skip ahead oh, thirty seconds, if that's even possible. <laughs> anyway, uh, quadrant three. So that's something that's still urgent and is coming out as like we need to do this right now. But these are the unimportant things. Um, examples of this might be uh, somebody texts you and says, "Hey, um, I got tickets for a show tonight. Can you come?" You know, it wasn't on the schedule, but if you don't come tonight, you're not going to that show. Uh, Is it really important for what you're doing? You know, that's that's like a grand example. Smaller examples might be the calls, emails, texts that we get throughout the day of yeah. do I really need to answer this email right now? Or did it just jump at my face uh, at my face? And basically, I need to, mm-hmm. you know, I want to go answer this. Um, and then quadrant four, which would be not urgent, not important. Those would be just things that can happen at any time. That's like going out with friends for drinks Mm. or, you know what I mean? Just getting lunch and taking a very long lunch. Um, It's the things that really don't lead a, like the person who really indulges in quadrant four wouldn't be leading a very productive lifestyle. 
But aren't um, all of these quadrants like you know say, important though to a healthy lifestyle? Yeah, I I would I would kind of talk about like defining your important. Like what is important to you in each of your like personal lives. I think uh Ty Lopez, he kind of has a um four four pillars for well, this is Ty Lopez. Like everyone has like a different virtual thing. You have your health, you know, your career, your you know, your finances and goals. Um, and then your love. Um, and I'm trying to think there's like one other type of part. What else do we have in our life? <laughs> I'm like forgetting. <laughs> Three out of four ain't bad. <laughs> Three out of four ain't bad, right? <laughs> I told you it's not my thing, but like basically defining importance and success too in your life, like friends going out to eat might be important to someone who's really wanting to connect with their friends and important for us to rejuvenate um but it's like to me not important not urgent is basically i think of social media really like just opening it up just a distraction for me and that's not that's not important but when it does come important is when i try to use it to build my business and so there's that like gray zone so that's i think this quadrant gives you a really good foundation of where to where for you to put these when a task or something that you want to do comes mm -hmm. into mind, you have this okay. place to organize things for yourself. You know what I mean? Do you guys use this on a daily basis then? Do you split up your day into the quadrants? And so do you still personally, use that? Yeah. what I do, which we haven't talked about the, the last quadrant with quadrant two yeah. is okay. I think, I think about that the most um and because those are things that are they're not urgent but they're important so for example in the health space you know if i want to gain 10 pounds of muscle you know that or maybe even more it's going to take me three to six months depending on how i want to plan it out okay. i have to be disciplined on a daily basis to actually to actually get what i want six months down the road and so having those like the diet making sure i eat right or making sure i get to the gym three days a week those are q2 activities because there's not urgent but they are important like nothing's bad's going to happen to me if i really don't do that right now but it will have a long-term benefit and that's another thing tying back into content i think it's kind of the same thing there's no urgency to put out a piece of content. There's no urgency for that. But it's important, especially for a business trying to attract more people. And if you don't do it on a consistent basis, it won't do anything for you. You mm -hmm. know, you have compounding a positivity of all this content working for you, but you also have a compound of negativity. Like, I don't know if that's the right way to frame it, but like of not doing things. So mm -hmm. it's just like compounding, like you just keep doing it less and less, I guess. Basically, that's kind of get the gist. I'm like rambling a little bit, but that's how I think about Q2. So what I do like on a daily basis, I have a, a, I have, I call my power list, top three things I need to do. And for the most part, I do my best to at least have one or two Q2 things um, that will, that will help me long term. Um and that could be for me, if I want to, I want to get better at copywriting or something. I, I used to have that as my Q2, where it's like, okay, today I'm going to write 10 pieces of copy. Um, and, you know, there's no urgency for that or trying to get better at posting. Let's plan, let's write, you know, I'd write the, the videos for that. So that's how I think of Q2. What are you guys' thoughts? Yeah, um, as you were talking, really, two things kind of came uh, to my mind, one is I don't want to sound like a total jerk and say, oh, yeah, hanging out with friends is totally unimportant. That's not what I mean You're at all. Piece of I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not I'm not <laughs> at saying that at all. Um, I actually think that that really gets us into a conversation a lot on paradigms and what is important to us, which we can talk about at another time. But, mm -hmm. you know, everybody has those things which are extremely important and i think that when somebody focuses on work as their only avenue of importance they start to um get depleted in other areas and 
And it actually Stephen Covey actually talks about that later on in the book, too, of, you know, your emotional bank account um, and when you make deposits and not. And so that's a that's another thing. But as far as what Raymond was saying with the content and it being in quadrant two, I think that that's exactly the way that it should be thought about, even though it's so easy to not think about it that way, because all like a lot of content, what is what it's all struggling to do is grab attention, right? Say, hey, I'm important. Look at me. So we instinctively think of it as a attention grabber sort of quadrant three thing. But we have to be putting in the efforts of what we are doing on our end and what we can control. Um, and that starts to be more of a quadrant two sort of action where this is not something like I think about posting every single day. But it is something that if I don't post, I start to not exist. And it becomes a thing that I have to be doing basically more consistently as it's not an urgent thing for me to figure that out right now. But it is definitely important. So I wanted to kind of uh, add to that. And then also the last thing is, is that I have I'm like in the throes of reading this book. So which is why I can quote it pretty well. Um, but one of the things that... Um, he focuses on is that as you move into quadrant two, one of the ways that Stephen Covey suggests creating your schedule is instead of daily planning, doing weekly planning. Um, because what that weekly planning will do is, um, and this is a new method for me, so I'm not saying that this is like the exact right thing, but I've been trying it out and with, uh, with some moderate success, I should say, um, where you can find those quadrant two tasks throughout that will be very beneficial to you schedule that time. But because you're doing it on a weekly basis, you're actually able to find other hours moments where you have what could be considered free time if you plan it out on the weak point and that and those quote unquote free times can be where you can start to do the things that become more important to you, whether you say, hey, I was originally going to schedule an hour for this conversation, but I'm loving this talk so much and I'm really getting so much out of it. It's going to be an hour and 30 minutes, two hours, or I have this other deadline that came up all of a sudden. Now I have this time right here to do it. So it's like the idea of kind of taking a step back a little bit further allows for more quadrant two activity while also at the same time having a wider grander scale of what could happen so that's sort of right on yeah so well, that's another thing. nice yeah what are you thinking does any of what we're saying making sense to you a hundred percent but do i do i use this no what might help is if we uh ran through a quick exercise with this thing how do i how do i take this information and put this into practice and make it useful for me you know you guys the listeners everybody out there in the world that wants to definitely know how to streamline their productivity. This is definitely something I've been struggling with. I mean, you know, we're all kind of solo entrepreneurs, right? So it's not like I have an office to go to and there's agendas and stuff. We're kind of making it up as we go along and sometimes keeping focused on what's, you know, going to make us money and monetize that time rather than I need to go change the logo on my Facebook page why that doesn't yeah. do anything but it's yeah, yeah. something that's been on the list for a while so this is great so how do we put this into use Dude, so i want to say a quick point and then i'm going to throw it over to raymond because i'm sure he's going to be a lot smarter than me on this okay but a quick point is that in order to really understand what will move the needle things like that you have to decide for you what is going to be important and like raymond was talking about a little bit earlier the idea of some people break it down into their happiness, their health, their wealth, uh, their love, whatever that might be. And different people have different uh, things that are important to them, right? Um, as long as you define sort of your importance and where you want to go, all of a sudden, the urgencies really start to become pretty self-evident once you have your importances down. So... You can't, there are lots of ways that you can start to see yourself um, develop these. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But I did want to say that importance is something that is really defined by the person itself. Gotcha. Um, you know, so. Okay. Well, right on. Raymond, take it away, man. Show me how to use these four quadrants and uh, make this effective for me because I want to be highly effective. 
Jeez. Don't we all? No, no yeah. pressure. No pressure. <laughs> just, just tell me all the secrets, how you become so effective. I would say I am, I would say I'm not the most effective person. And I, I work on this all the time. But, um, and it's, it's just like asking the simple question of like what Nick says, like what is important? What is long-term benefits? Like, okay. and the, I try, I used to do the weekly thing when I first read this book too. And I found myself, like I scheduled the weekly in my um, Google calendar and tasks that I had, which it could work. Definitely. It still probably works. And I still do that for like meetings and things like that. I try to, you know, do that. But for me, I found myself, and this could probably be like a personal thing. I found myself needing to move things around almost like at a daily basis. So it's like still being flexible a little bit. And one thing that I'm, so I'm not much of a morning person, but I would love to be because the world is asleep during the morning. And that's, I think would be the best time to do Q2 activities either in the morning or af- at night when there's no distractions. Um, like that's when you can deep dive into something you're working on for long-term projects. Um, or you go to the gym and no one can distract you. Um, there's other things, but that's kind of like, that's, it's, um, I don't know if I have much to like add here. I was like looking at the, the, he has here, um, a chart that says like the activities and the important for like Q1, like activities would be crisis, pressing problems, deadlines, driven projects like nick said q3 these are all interruptions some calls mail reports meetings um pressing matters popular activities q4 is like trivia busy work some mail more phone calls or something time wasters pleasant activities um and then q2 is really just like it says prevention stuff so what and i think of that is like what can we prepare right now that will prevent us from headache in, you know, in with our businesses and with our clients, what can we do in pre-production for this and the strategy to make sure that the long-term outcome is way better, right? Rather than just kind of going in, not preparing anything, just kind of winging it, you know, those things would help that long-term outcome relationship building. Uh, networking with people and trying to build those business relationships um, is can be a long term thing. You know, um, I know that for me personally, networking, I have built relationships over the years, business relationships where it, it took a couple years until we finally started doing something together and working. Um, and the more I do it, I have to be consistent about it, knowing that you know, I will eventually get more clients in the door. I will eventually be able to help more people. And it's not always going to happen right away. Um, And yeah, so that's kind of, that's, I was reading through this thing. Um, That's kind of how I think about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So Raymond, one of the things that you were talking about there was, sorry, I can see my camera's making some issues let me just fix this real quick real quick ah he's he's back problem solved two seconds um yeah see (laughs) be able to be able to uh problem solve very quickly yeah there you go no 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 (laughs) um so that was a q1 that was that was a q1 that was urgent (laughs) and important it needed to be done Uh no um so we're talking a lot too about how can we apply this what I would suggest is when I was reading through this, there's not like an exact exercise, but it was literally okay. an indication to me of how I understood my way of living was uh, he breaks it down at one point. I'm just going to show in the little book right here. Okay. He breaks it down as to what sort of feelings you might be feeling if you're in these different quadrants. And it was so eye-opening to me of, oh, I didn't realize that I was in quadrant one, but if I'm consistently feeling stressed and burnt out and managing crises all the time, and it's like, I'm consistently going, man, like one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, 
all of a sudden I realize, okay, I'm in quadrant one and I'm not really prioritizing the right way. It's everything that's coming up mm. to me is where I'm constantly living. Quadrant three, uh, that would be short-term focus, crisis management again, uh, reputation, um, seeing goals and plans is worthless. So that's like not thinking in the future, but more like thinking in the exact moment of, oh, this would be something cool to do, so let me go do it. That's all of these distractions of, I really want to focus on my logo. I really want to do this. That's the kind of principal characteristic where you start to say, you know, I really want to look a certain way. So you do all of these things that start to come up or feel a certain way. Um, quadrant, if you're living in a quadrant three, four space, that's generally a lack of responsibility. As uh, Stephen Covey puts it, not me. I'm not the one saying that. But um, <laughs> don't blame me. Don't blame me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's where you start to do a lot of the things that are unimportant. Um, and you're just focusing on what gives, you know, um, what is the immediate source of joy and no long term effects, right? Yeah. It's then, like your vices. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. And oh, yeah. then, okay. Well, what do you I live in that quadrant then, uh, don't I? <laughs> like, that's hey, what you have learned. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's a bicep, look, look, it's like, it's, it's, and the thing is, is it's not just, and as Raymond made this point really, really well, it's not just like, oh, I can't have fun. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. not what that's about at all. It's more like these are the things that truly actually are unimportant. And the results of this, and he literally listed out, is total irresponsibility, fired from jobs, dependent on others and other institutions for the basic needs. Chris, are you dependent on others? Have you been fired from jobs recently? Oh, not recently. No. See? <laughs> not recently. <laughs> not I, would say, recently. No. I would say you're not in you're not in Q4. Yeah. Okay. The Q the Q4. <laughs> I, it's kind of hard to be fired when you're own, your own boss. So I don't know how to yeah. take that. But uh, I, I, real quick side note, I have wanted to fire myself so many times, but I can't because I'm not producing the results that I wanted to. No, like this mm. is where, where I've just been like, okay, like I objectively looked at myself towards the beginning of my career. Also, I was being very hard on myself because sometimes we can be, you know, our I, own worst critics. I was just about yeah. to say like- You know what I mean? Everyone, mm -hmm. we're, when, you're, when you're working by yourself, you are the hardest boss you'll ever have. Right, right. right. Well, I'm very, I'm very lucky. I have a business partner that works with me constantly and we're, we powwow all the time. But I think to myself, like, okay, I'm not producing in sales in particular. That was a really hard uh, area for me to break into. Um, I'm thinking, man, I'm not producing the results in sales that I really want. If I could fire myself, I so would. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but the thing was, was I was like, I objectively took a step back and looked at what was I really focusing on when I was doing sales? Was I like taking one client and just going hard and constantly talking to that one person? Or was I actually trying to build my network and meet a lot of different people and really identify when am I in a sales conversation versus when am I in a um, just like a normal meet and greet situation, right? And once I was able to do those things, all of a sudden, my mentality was, well, I don't want to fire myself as a salesman because now I know I'm getting, I'm producing results. I'm getting more meetings. I'm doing these kinds of things, right? So that was actually me in my own sense of quadrant four, if that made sense. Mm -hmm. um, then he talks about quadrant two the results that we can expect if we're living in quadrant two. And that is vision and perspective, balance, discipline, control, and few crises. Crises will still happen, but they're going to be much less because you're preparing for them throughout. Now, all of this is like amazing in theory uh, and everything like that, <laughs> but it's kind of just realizing and checking in with yourself too of how am I feeling what quadrant does that put me in? And what are the things I can be doing to sort of move myself to quadrant two um, are some of the things that really start to uh, get to me when I be when I'm thinking when I be thinking about these things, you know, yeah, um, I'm thinking all the what, time I'd be thinking, Nick, when you uh, so one quote that I always love is we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. It's like mm. one of my favorite things. And you reminded me a little way back about in Q1 about the feeling, the after effects of being in Q1, which is feeling burnt out, feeling like you're going from one thing, like lack of control, but everything feels important and urgent. And I was like thinking about my last weeks, how I've been showing up. And I 
for a lot of the stuff, you know, sales meetings, networking, stuff like that, things that are important and feel urgent, but they're not Q2. They're not developing things in the back. And I was letting those take over a lot of stuff. Um, so I was like, man, I'm, I forgot. <laughs> like it's been a while um, too. So it was, uh, it was really good to hear that. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know it's kind of, it's kind of good to like go over this stuff again. And this was actually earlier in the book too. He has this thing about creating your own mission statement. And one of my sort of last thoughts mm sort of a parting thing is one of the things that's on my mission statement is now time spent to reflect is time well spent. Um, so I take, I will take time in a week and just say, well, how did I do this week? What are the things that were actually um, productive for me? What were the things that weren't? And then moving on because so often I'm like, Oh, if I'm not working on my next project, how am I going to move to the next thing? Well, that's crisis one or that's quadrant one thinking constantly. Okay. So instead I have to take the time and just be like, did this process work? Good. Let's keep it implementing. Did this process not work? Fine. Let's move it on, you know, or how could it be better? So now I live with the principle of if I take five, 10 minutes, you know what I mean? A day or even like 10 minutes a week, to just write down my activities for the week. How did those things go? How did that play out? All of a sudden, I'm starting to be way more productive because I'm understanding what's going on with me. So that's a big one for me too. Mm, I love that. Right I love that. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share um, one of my favorite, um, not this, it, it's a quote in there, but I don't have the quote. I just have like the gist of the quote. Um, he talks about how when between a stimulus, so something happening to a response, the action that you take, we have this gap or we have that choice of doing something or not. And so this, this is more like taking that step back is when, and I'm you know, kind of talking to myself now too, it's like when we have that, that stimulus of an email where it's like, this is the client that uh, needs our attention or we have sales meetings, um, like I have that space to think and then respond. And you could think of this in many micro aspects as well. Um, but that's all I wanted to share um, about that. Right on. Well, I thank you guys so much. So that was a deep dive on Stephen Covey's seven habits. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What? Hold you got on, something to on, say? Wait, about what is that? going on? Nick is I'm like, sorry. No, I'm, no, I'm no. just saying, Chris, you just got a bunch of information thrown at you about this. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. My question is, what are you taking away from it? Anything oh, good? You know, Anything I think that, that doesn't make sense? Or? Like you said, there's so many educators that have the same kind of mm, roundabout way of talking about these principles and stuff. So it's not like I'm not on the same path. I just obviously have never read this book and dealt with these quadrants. But, you know, I try to do the same thing, right? We like I try to set up my schedule so that I'm only responding to emails in the first 30 minutes of the morning from anything that came overnight. And then the last hour of the day is usually when I'm paying attention. I try to shut off all those things, especially when you're trying to do creative work it is really hard to be neck deep into an edit or creating something to just all of a sudden be texted or called about something completely asinine that has nothing to do with what you're working on and you allow that distraction to slow down your work process and stuff like that so that that's at least what i do what i'm taking away from this is that there's still more to do how can i be better how can i start thinking about things further down the line i'm starting to get, make that shift i'm starting to think about six months uh, ahead for a production with my clients now, rather than week to week, like I've been doing for the last six months previous. Um, and of course that comes from sitting down week to week and going, what sucked this week? What did I hate doing? And through that, I have been able to create systems, automations, hire people in the areas that I'm not you know, strong in and whatnot, so that I can move forward and keep going with uh, that forward momentum and working on things that actually monetize my time rather than working on things that are just distractions or tedious tasks that are never going to do anything, but still need to get done. Like you're saying there. So I do love this uh, idea and stuff like that. So if I can start implementing these quadrants and stuff, especially weekly, um, then I definitely will. 
So I yeah. appreciate you guys doing the deep dive. Don't worry, I was I was going to give my final thoughts before we head okay. out of here. You okay, didn't need good. to I, I, I was no, no, I was no, no, like, no, no. don't you escape? Don't no, you no, escape no, no. from me, no, like, sir? I'm just going to hide. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No, I was going to give us a quick recap and let you guys know what was going on. I don't hide. I got nowhere to hide. My hobbit hole's far away from here. I can't go diving into it right now. So, um, but yeah, that was a great like deep dive on that. Obviously, what we are always talking about is the the mindset behind you know, work ethics, if you will. And this relates even to people outside of the realm that we work in, which is videography, editing, content creation, right? So any any entrepreneur or anyone that's trying to accomplish anything can still utilize these tips right here. So I want to thank you guys so much for explaining that to me because I definitely did never had never heard that before. And uh, maybe I should check out that book. I'm always the type of person was like, have they made that into a movie yet? Because I'll watch the movie. <laughs> so if they haven't done that yet, then I, I, uh, I'm i going to be waiting to see if I can uh, see that. Maybe Fox will be producing that next year. They've been doing yeah. a lot of adaptations lately. So, well, I want to thank you guys so much once again for joining me today. Thank you all for tuning in to our show. If you enjoyed what you heard, tune in every week for more. And please consider subscribing on whatever platform you are enjoying us on. And if it's on Apple Podcasts, be sure to give us the biggest of five-star review you can. Until next time, remember, now is the time to turn that content creation into monetization. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time.